Welcome to the JC Sports YouTube page, Detroit Lions News Podcast. We're going to have you cover about Detroit Lions football as we go through for the whole season. Obviously, we'll have Red Wings content, Tigers content, Michigan, Michigan State content as I see fit because I'm only one person. I can only do one thing. So follow me in my social channels below and you'll get to you'll get to know everything. But the Detroit Lions have a lot of injuries coming into Monday Night Football. And it's a good thing that the Detroit Lions have the early bye week. I didn't think I didn't think I'd enjoy the early bye week as much as I do now. Because when you think about the injuries that the Detroit Lions are going to have to overcome, I mean, we're talking about the Porta being day to day. We're talking about McNeil being day to day. We're talking about Barnes is going to be down for a significant amount of time. Dan Campbell confirmed today that Marcus Danport injury is a season ender, although they will try to get second opinions. We're not shocked about Marcus Davenport being injured. I don't think anyone's shocked by that. That's a breaking news, and it's not really breaking news because we knew that this was going to happen. It was pro- probably a foregone conclusion. The guy can't stay healthy. Derek Barnes is going to be a huge hit to the, the linebacker core, but the good thing about it is in my, I, along my whole course of my preview of this team and everything, I thought the Detroit Lions had four starting linebackers. That fourth starting linebacker will get inserted into the starting lineup, so I don't really see a big fall off there. I think Malcolm Rodriguez could do a damn good job, and I think that if he plays the way he plays, it could really help this team as in terms of the way that they play. So it will be interesting to see what happens with that. In relation to McNeil and, and Laporta, Laporta is obviously a big injury. Laporta obviously is a huge piece of this, this team, and as we see from um, – Jeremy Reisman, he says, Dan Campbell says they haven't made a decision yet to put Derek Barnes on IR to return. Says they're going to keep getting options. Says if it needs to heal first, then they'll decide if it needs surgery. So it seems like Derek Barnes is going to be out for a while. It seems like Sam Laporta and Lee McNeil have good injury prognosis, which you would say. But all in all, like this team, I think they're turning the corner now. And Lee McNeil... That injury will hurt, but when you think about Marcus Davenport and Lee McNeil potentially missing time, it's a thank God that you guys got Brett Holmes, who drafted Mikai Wingo, who led the team, was one of the leaders in uh, pressures this week, and Levi Enrique. And, you know, we all thought when Levi Enrique was drafted in the second round, we all thought that this kid would be a key part of this team over three years. He hasn't been that guy. But now you're going to have to rely on him. Now you're going to have to rely on Mikai Wingo. Broderick Martin, uh, Kyle Pecco. If McNeil is out for a couple weeks, you can make do with it. DJ Reader is still there. This team is it, there's not a f- steep drop off. Like last year, if you when you lost to Lee McNeil, I thought there would be a very very distinct drop off. They played good down the stretch. Obviously, when you got into you know s- some of those games that you were you were. You needed a Lee McNeil, it would have helped, but losing a Lee McNeil for two weeks in terms of what it could have been is a bit much bigger win than you know losing him for the year, like Marcus Stamport. Same with Sam Laporta. Like if Sam Laporta is out two weeks, you got Monday Night Football and you got the bye. Give him that time off. We'll deal with it after the bye. Uh, because I think this team is really put in I think they're really put in position to you know, get past these injuries. When you look at Sam Laporta, Brock Wright can take that that notion. He's not Brock Wright is not Sam Laporta, but he could fill a void. Sam with Lee McNeil, Levi Enzo could, could fill that void. Makai Wingo can fill that void. DJ Reader can fill that void. Obviously, at the Marcus Davenport part, part you know, obviously we've heard that Anzarike could potentially play defensive end. Makai Wingo could play defensive end, um, but it's going to be very interesting how you overcome that because a lot of they were talking about Josh Pascal being the guy that could potentially be the guy that, you know, takes over and, and grabs that role. Well, we've been waiting for a while for Josh Pascal to grab the defensive end position and grab that role. You know, it's he's three years in. I, we haven't seen much. He was in for, you know, the, the only time I seen him in the game making plays was when he got that rough in the past apparently yes, yesterday. So it doesn't give me much confidence in, in Josh Pascal. I have more pressure. I have more confidence in Levi and Enrique. 
honestly, that's shocking to hear, but I do have more confidence in him because I see every week the his confidence is getting better. His pass rush is getting better. He's been in the backfield a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Same with Makai Wingo. I mean, he's only a rookie, but I, he doesn't play like a rookie, to be, on, be honest. Like, they gave him a couple snaps in game one. They gave him a couple snaps and more snaps in game two. They gave him more snaps in game three. I think his production is only going to go up. But if Josh Pascal wants to stay around in this league, this is his last shot, to be honest. Like, let's be totally honest right here. If he wants to maintain himself as a starter with the Detroit Lions, this is a good shot. Or in the NFL, this is a good shot. If you want to be a starter, this is a very, very good shot because Pat Kerwin said it best. When you are the opposite side of Aiden Hutchinson, you should get 10 sacks at minimum. At minimum. So there's no... So for the rest of the year, if Josh Pascal doesn't get eight to seven sacks, is he the right guy? You know, that's a, that's part that's a part that people just they gloss over. That, that having a guy like Aiden Hutchinson on the other side really puts an emphasis on what you can expect from the other side. If Josh Pascal isn't getting six to seven sacks for the rest of the year with Marcus Davenport out, Marcus Davenport out, he's not the guy. He might be a backup. He might be a death player. But he is not the guy to be a starter on the other side of Hutch. Because like I love what Pat Kerwin said from moving the chains, NFL series, XM Radio, former general manager, former scout. The guy opposite of Hutchinson should get 10 sacks. 10 sacks. I think that's a good barometer because what Hutchinson brings to the other side of the line, the 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 stack coverage, the blocking, the schemes that they have to be deployed towards Hutch. I mean, yesterday we we're seeing a guy, with, they were in 13 personnel. We've seen, you know, them chipping Hutch. We've seen a guard coming by and hitting, hitting Hutch on his way out. And then it goes to Barton, who's a tackle, and he was hitting Hutch. So Hutch took a lot of abuse. The guy on the other side isn't taking that abuse. He's not taking the same abuse. And they got they got a key in on DJ Reader. They got a key in on Lee Van Zarike. That leaves you wide open on the other side. So if I'm a defensive end, whether it's James Houston, whether it's Josh Pascal, whether it's a guy we're not even mentioning, because Josh, uh, Coach Dan Campbell said that uh, John Kaminsky is pretty far off, so we can we can leave him out for now. But if you're a guy like Pascal or you're a guy like Houston, or you're a guy like Wingo who could potentially grab the role. This is a perfect opportunity. The perfect opportunity. You potentially have the defensive player of the year on the other side of you. You have a great vet in DJ Reader on, alongside of you. And on the other defensive tackle spot, you have a great defensive tackle in Ali McNeil. The same standard is the same for all these guys. If you can't get 10 sacks for the, or for the rest of the year, let's prorate it. If you can't get seven to eight sacks on the other side of Aiden Hutchinson, what are we even doing? And, you know, look, we could sit here and say that Hutch doesn't need help, or we could say that, oh, we have faith in the defensive ends. If you get to the trade deadline and you don't see a fit for your defensive players, your defensive ends, to fill Marcus Davenport's spot. Because let's be honest, Marcus Davenport, for the most part, played pretty damn well. But Marcus Davenport, his shoes have to be filled. And if a player on this roster doesn't want to fill the void, you have to go somewhere else at the trade deadline. Period. End of story. You are in a Super Bowl window. There's no, we like our guys. We love our guys. We want to keep these guys. Doesn't matter to me. Not even a slightest bit. You're in a Super Bowl window. In a couple of years, you'll be paid an agent, Aiden Hutchinson, $30 million, $35 million. The time to strike is now. And if these guys that I named Hutchinson that can't produce on the opposite side of Hutch, then what are we even doing? Go find a replacement because it's key. It's key. The standard is the standard. It doesn't move. It doesn't go anyway. You looked at Marcus Denport. You looked at how he was playing. He was playing pretty damn good opposite of Hutch. 
The same is the same for every other player on the roster. And we've seen too much of Josh Pascal. We've seen James Houston, you know, in spurts. Why is he not playing? Maybe it's a coaching thing. They, they, they don't they don't trust him in rundowns. That's the type of thing that you kind of get into. But when I look at this Detroit team, I look at how they that they've defended the run. They've been a very, very good run, uh, run defense. If you look at the last 100-yard rusher they had, it was against Carolina Week 16, December 24th, 2022. The standard is the st- standard. This Detroit Lions team has an opportunity upon itself. They are expected to be uh, a good football team. But if, like I said, if, if these guys that are supposed to step in, James Houston, Josh Pascal, Makai Wingo, if they can't produce at a high level, the trade deadline is where it's at. There is no time for we like our guys, we like the young guys. No. Because this is a very, you don't get much wiggle room in the NFL. Ask a Buffalo Bill fan that. You know, they, they, they thought for a couple years that they had an infinite window. And it went it went bye bye. Now it's still good this year, but it it when you replace as much talent as the Buffalo Bills has 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 had to replace, it puts you in an awkward position. So the Detroit, Detroit Lions have a lot to prove in the next couple weeks, especially with the guy on the opposite side of Hutch. That's who got a lot to prove. And if you look at if you look at Josh Pascal the way he was playing, um, this is his time to shine. You don't get many opportunities like this. And the excuse of, oh, he's a young kid. He's in his, he's going in, you know, he's, he's in his third year. There's no excuse for the excuse. He's got to be much better. And that's what I look at with this Troy Lions team. So with all the injuries that have kind of plagued this team, with the Porter being out, Brock Wright can step in. McNeil, Makai Wingo, Andre can step in. Obviously, there's DJ Reader. But I look at a guy like Marcus Denport. That's going to be a big loss. Who is going to help? Who's going to? Who is going to step in on that role? We know who's stepping in for uh, Derek Barnes. It's Malcolm Rodriguez, and that's not a bad guy to step in. But all in all, you are expected to be a good team. And damn it, if we're going to be totally honest with ourselves, the most difficult spot. I I see right now is that defensive end spot opposite Hutch. I thought Marcus Stamport looked good. I think Makai Wingo could be good. But one of these guys is going to have to take that job right now. There is no time for, oh, he was young. You know, he's young and he's going to learn. No, it's now or never. For these three guys, Wingo, Anzarike, and Pascal, this is the time to grab that side opposite of Hutch. It's It's not the hardest job in the world. But if you're capable, you're going to take this job over. If you're not capable, we can find someone else that's going to be capable to get the production that is expected on the opposite side of Hutch. Like Pat Kerwin said, moving the chains. 10 sacks minimum on the opposite side of Hutch. When you're in a guy, if you had Crosby on the other side, 10 sacks. Miles Garrett, 10 sacks. This is what is expected of you when you play on the opposite side of a star defensive end, and Detroit has that in, in Aiden, Aiden Hutchinson. So we're going to see what's, what this team has to bring. And we're going to see these young kids, and if they're ready to go, Josh Pascal, Makai Wingo, Levi Anzarike, this is your shot, your chance to shine. And if they're going to shine, now is the time. We'll see you in more Detroit Lions videos. I have a video coming out tomorrow about Terry on Arnold. We'll get to that tomorrow. Uh, please stay tuned for more uh, videos as we come along. I'm going to be posting every day. Uh, Lions, Rubbing, Tigers, Pistons, Michigan, Michigan State. So stay tuned to that. And I will see you in the next video as we talk more Detroit Lions football.